so let's begin with the law of motion laws of motion this is newton's first law we know newton's first law is law of inertia so actually this law was given by galileo not newton but because newton formulated other laws also and he formulated framework of mechanics he gave uh, he gave the concept of force actually formula for force that's why now this law is also attributed to newton only okay so what is newton's first law every body continues to be in its state of rest or of uniform motion unless an external unbalanced force acts on that body right this is the newton's first law so for an example now suppose you find some body at rest okay so suppose there is this ball which is resting on the ground playground okay so now what does newton say that there is no unbalanced force acting on this body there is no unbalanced force acting on this body that means there might be forces okay it doesn't mean that there are no forces there might be forces but those forces are balanced so whatever force is acting in upwards direction you can say same force will be acting in downwards direction if there is a force acting towards left same force will be acting towards right okay so this is newton's first law of motion so here now there are two forces acting on this body one is the gravitational force due to the earth and second is now if something is resting on some surface that surface exerts an upward force a force which is perpendicular to the surface it is called as normal reaction okay so this force is called as normal reaction right so okay so this normal reaction and the gravitational force they are balanced and that's why net force on this body is equal to zero so it is not moving okay so now in this case suppose the body is at rest okay and let's consider another case so let's suppose this is a case when body is at rest let's suppose in this case this ball is moving with a constant speed okay it is moving with constant velocity along the ground okay so suppose this is a frictionless ground so now this state of rest and state of uniform motion according to newton it is equal because in this case there is no net force acting on this body in this case also there is no net force acting on the body okay so total forces that are acting on the body are balanced right so in that sense the state of rest and state of uniform motion they are equal so what will happen if force acts on the body so the force will change its state of rest or of uniform motion right so body stain to they uh, tain to be in state of rest or state of uniform motion unless there is unbalanced force so what does it mean if there is a balanced sorry unbalanced force what will it do it will change the state of rest or state of uniform motion of a body that means what will it do it will cause acceleration right yes no okay so we know newton's second law okay force is equal to mass into acceleration so the hint of that equation is there in this first law itself that force changes state of rest or state of uniform motion okay so now what does first law say that sum of all forces acting on the body if it is zero then body it remains at rest or it keeps on moving with the uniform velocity so we can write this we can write an equation for this that is if body is at rest or if body is moving with uniform velocity that means the body is in equilibrium we say body is in equilibrium so what does this mean that net sum of all forces is equal to zero okay so we can add all the forces on the body so let's suppose f i bar is a force acting on a body okay so all the forces will be suppose there are n forces so we can say that summation of 
all those forces summation of i goes from 1 to n of f i bar will be equal to what it will be equal to 0 and then we can consider an example of this so here is an example so suppose this is a ball metal ball okay and it is hanging off these two ropes okay these are two ropes okay so now we want to find out suppose tension in this rope okay so both ropes are inclined at an angle of 45 degrees so what is tension in the rope now suppose you have yeah it will be not upward it acts towards the rigid support okay so for an example suppose i draw this rigid support only and I draw this rope. Okay. So now if you hang something and if you are drawing free body diagram, okay. Free body diagram means you draw that body and all forces acting on that body. Then you will draw this force upwards. But now if you are drawing a free body diagram of this support only, or you can say the roof, then what will be the force? force acting on this rope again it will be tension in the string so now you will draw tension in the opposite direction because this force will be acting in opposite signs okay got it yes no okay so what is tension so tension is force acting along the length of string we can say okay and it acts everywhere along the string so now how do we determine the direction of tension so it depends on the free body diagram that you are drawing okay so tension is a force along the length of string okay and there is see there can be two directions of tension so actually what happens is see when you stretch a body what will happen there are atoms and molecules inside the body they want to stay at a fixed distance okay they want to stay at a fixed dis distance now suppose these are some atoms okay so now see you are stretching this okay when you exert some external force what will happen some stretching will happen so distance between these atoms will change but they want to stay at the fixed distance so what will what will happen there will be an attractive force between these atoms okay if stretching happens there will be an attractive force so that is known as tension in the string okay so now what is direction of that attractive force so if you are looking at these atoms these atoms are pulled down by these atoms right so for them this attractive force will be downwards what about these atoms so you can say force acting on these atoms force acting on these atoms it will be upwards right yes no so therefore the direction of tension depends upon so which body you are considering okay if there are two bodies connected by so there is this body suppose okay, there is this body when you are finding tension on this body so tension will be acting downwards okay but if there is body on this side there is body on this side then you're drawing you're considering forces acting on this body so in this case the tension will be acting upwards here okay all right so now whenever string or a rope or any linear body it gets stretched what will happen there will be a tension in the string in a wire also okay so tension in that body 
okay not string the body so you have the uh, you have these two wires two strings you can say and they are inclined at an angle of 45 degrees okay to this rigid support and you connect this another body okay this ball here so you want to find out how much would be the tension in the spring so what you do is so now tension in this string and this string it will be equal okay because they are inclined at same angle so the tension in this string and this string is suppose t so what you do is you resolve this tension along two components so vertical component so if this angle is theta this angle will be 90 minus theta so this angle will be theta okay so the horizontal component will be horizontal component this angle will be theta right so this will be t multiplied by cos of 45 not sine of 45 but it doesn't actually 45 degrees is an angle for which cos and sine is equal right so therefore this will be t cos of 45 degrees okay so you resolve this tension along two components this is one component this is another component and this one also along two components this is one this is another so what do you get there are horizontal components which get cancelled out right horizontal components they are acting opposite to each other they get cancelled out okay and the vertical components get added so what are vertical components vertical components are t sin theta and t sin theta okay so it is 2 t multiplied by sin of theta or sin of 45 and what do they what do they do these vertical components they balance weight of this body okay and therefore we can say 2t sin of 45 degrees is equal to mg okay sin 45 is 1 upon root 2 suppose weight of this body mg is equal to 50 okay this for an example so therefore we can find out t and t comes out to be 50 divided by root 2 okay so this is a simple example right so now this is just based upon newton's first law okay so there can be an example like this so this is based on newton's first law only okay so then now where is this newton's first law or second law third law where are they applicable so they are applicable in a frame which is known as frame of uh, sorry inertial frame of reference okay so what does frame of reference mean frame of reference means you have an observer which has access to a clock and some kind of coordinate system okay so basically you have observer who can measure distances okay and who can measure time that is the frame of reference okay observer who can measure distances and time so now this coordinate system can be anything you can consider a tree and okay you can mark tree as origin and find out distances along x y z axis okay in three different directions three perpendicular directions from that tree so that tree will be your origin okay so this is frame of reference observer plus uh, he should be able to measure distances he should be able to measure time okay so now what is inertial and non-inertial frame of reference so i said newton's laws are applicable in inertial frame of reference that means the observer must be either at rest or he should be moving with constant velocity okay observer is at rest or he is moving at constant velocity okay then it is known as inertial frame of reference and if observer is accelerating then he cannot apply the newton's laws okay because this is non inertial frame of reference okay so newton's laws are designed to be applied in the inertial frame of reference okay is this thing clear okay so now let's think of let's think of okay this observer and this observer so there is this person who is inside a bus bus is at rest 
okay and this person is on the ground he is also at rest suppose so now both are at rest so now this person so suppose this is a physics student okay he is very he has just learned newton's laws and he wants to apply them okay so he will say that this person is on the ground so there is a gravitational force acting on the person and there is a force due to this floor the normal reaction both are equal and opposite they cancel out and therefore the person is at rest okay then this person can also apply the newton's laws on this person and he can find out that he is at rest because what because of what the floor of the bus applies a normal reaction and his weight is acting downwards both are balanced okay after that after that if this person is moving with some velocity still he can apply newton's laws okay both of them can can apply okay so now see what this person will say that this person is coming towards him with velocity v right and what are forces acting on him the normal reaction which is acting upwards and there is a downward force which is force due to gravity both are balanced so he is moving with some velocity that's fine there is no acceleration okay because force will be equal to mass times acceleration okay and in same way this person can apply newton's laws okay but now suppose this person is accelerating suppose this person is accelerating then now this person is in problem he cannot apply the newton's laws because for him this person will have some velocity okay and he will be accelerating in the opposite direction okay so this person will say that the person on the ground he is coming towards him with some acceleration but see now he cannot find the origin of that force because see there will be upward force and there will be a downward force normal reaction and force due to gravity there is no other force okay but still this person is for him it is accelerating he is accelerating but in reality this person is not accelerating okay so his perception his perception of motion is not correct okay for this person on the ground he can apply newton's laws so for him now what are the forces acting on this person if he is accelerating one is the gravitational force which will always act okay downwards mg one is normal reaction due to the floor of bus which is acting upwards and then there is a force along the acceleration okay so for an example if the person is sitting here then he will be pushed by his seat okay in forward direction and that's why he will he will be accelerating okay yes no right so this is how this person cannot apply newton's laws this person can apply newton's laws okay all right so that was newton's first law then let's come to the newton's second law of motion okay and newton second law of motion is very famous if you yeah actually after four five years what will you remember no yeah that that thing you will remember you will remember one more thing to every action there is always equal and opposite reaction right okay that will be first thing second thing you might remember you might not remember f equals to ma but there are people wearing t-shirts etc right so they wear f equals to ma e equals to mc square so this equation is very famous okay so newton's second law what does this say the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the external unbalanced force acting on the body and it takes place in the direction of external force okay so now newton's second law is 
not just f equals to ma what is newton's second law he says that rate of change of a quantity which is named as momentum okay and what is momentum momentum is mass times velocity of a body so according to newton this is the measure of motion okay this is measure of motion So force changes motion of body if we say then what does it change it changes momentum of body right not just the velocity we can say it changes the momentum okay so according to newton the rate of change of this mass times velocity is directly proportional to the external force and it takes place in the direction of external force and now if you remove this proportionality sign okay so dp bar by dt is the rate of change of momentum newton says it's directly proportional to the force if you remove this proportionality sign and put an equality sign what happens we have to keep a constant we have to put a constant that constant is k suppose now k is equal to 1 okay k is considered equal to 1 why because this was for the first time that somebody was giving law for the force sorry not law for the force equation for the force okay and so he was relating this quantity with this quantity so now you need unit for the force okay so if k is something k has got some value then the unit will be complicated right a little bit complicated but if if you want to keep it very simple then if you want to design a unit for the force and if you want to keep it very simple what will you do you will keep k equals to 1 okay so you will put k equals to 1 so therefore we say f bar is equal to dp bar by dt okay so then now this dp bar by dt is d by dt of mass times velocity so here we have got two terms so generally if there is a body which is intact whose mass is not changing then for that body force will be equal to mass multiplied by acceleration then mass will be constant but generally mass can also change velocity can also change okay so we take derivative of this thing so it's derivative of first term multiplied by second term as it is plus mass as it is that is first term as it is multiplied by derivative of the second term okay so f bar is equal to dm by dt multiplied by v bar plus m multiplied by dv by dt so this is the complete formula for the force and if we consider mass is constant if we say mass is constant then dm by dt will be equal to zero right derivative of a constant is zero in that case what will happen force will be equal to m dv by dt and dv by dt is we know it is acceleration so then we can say force is equal to mass times acceleration okay this is clear so we have to remember this formula as well as this formula so most of the times either dm by dt will be equal to zero or dv by dt will be equal to zero okay but there can be a case where uh, both of them are not zero okay right so now suppose some initial momentum of body is p1 bar which is m multiplied by initial velocity which is v bar at time t1 final momentum is p2 okay p2 bar it's m times v2 bar at time t2 so force can be written as what p2 bar minus p1 bar divided by t2 by t2 minus t1 and if you take this term t2 minus t1 on the other side what do you get force multiplied by the time interval it is equal to change in momentum of body okay so what is change in momentum force multiplied by time interval so this is known as impulse okay force multiplied by time is known as impulse but we'll learn about it afterwards okay so then let's come to the newton's third law okay very beautiful law for every action 
there is always an equal opposite and simultaneous reaction okay for every action there is always equal and opposite reaction so what is action and reaction something hmm. action and reaction means force okay action and reaction means they are forces okay so action is a force reaction is also a force so now for an example okay so for an example let's be violent suppose there is a person okay who slaps person a slaps person b you call this action what would be reaction in this case <laughs> actually see the action and reaction has happened already okay so the person who is giving the slap person a is slapping b okay so let's suppose he hits uh, on the cheek of second person okay then what happens is here there is a force exerted by this hand on the cheek of or face of the second person and the face of second person is exerting equal and opposite force on the hand of the first person okay so action and reaction have happened already okay so it's not like okay somebody slaps you you give a slap back right so action and reaction they always come in pairs okay they always come in pairs they happen simultaneously right so there is no need of extra reaction okay all right so you have this person who is standing on this floor okay and so can you guess what will be action in this case and reaction in this case this person is just standing on this floor will there be an action and reaction action is mg okay and reaction is okay so mg is force acting on this person right and n is acting on whom on the body so both of these forces are acting on the same body right okay so now this is not action reaction okay this is not action reaction so see what is action in this case okay you understand the difference if both forces are acting on the same body it cannot be action and reaction okay so action reaction are the two forces acting on two different bodies so for an example when you clap action is force exerted by one hand on other hand you can you can uh, pick your hand okay any one and reaction would be the force exerted by other hand on the first hand you can say okay you can say any one is first any one is second okay so these are forces exerted on different bodies two different bodies so in this case if you say mg is the normal reaction okay if see i will tell you two action reaction pairs here so what is mg mg is force exerted by force on this man by earth this is let's call this action and what is reaction then no 
So reaction in this case will be force on earth due to man. Okay. So this is gravitational force. Force on man due to earth is a gravitational force. Force on earth due to the man, it will be also the gravitational force. This is gravitational action and reaction, you can say. Okay. Earth attracts you, you attract earth. Okay, that's action and reaction. In this case, now he is standing on the floor. So what happens? Because earth is pulling him downwards, he is pulled downward. So he puts a pressure or he puts some force, you can say. Okay, he exerts some force on this ground. Okay, he wants to exert, he doesn't want to exert, but these two bodies are in contact. Man is being pulled downwards by earth. So what happens is his weight, okay, is acting on this surface. Okay, so this is the action, right? Not the force acting on the man. Okay, his weight acting on the ground is action. This is force exerted by man on the ground, and reaction would be then normal reaction. Okay, the force exerted by ground on the man. Okay, first is force exerted by man on the ground. Second one is force exerted by ground on the man. Got, got it? Okay, so you can say it is <clears throat> weight, but it's not the force exerted by gravity on the man. Okay, if you are calling in, uh, calling it an action, it will be force exerted by man on the ground. Okay, got the difference? Let's come to next topic, which is rocket. Okay, so this is actually a favorite topic uh, for the question setters. Okay, so a lot of times there have been a question based upon this one. So now we know the formula for force. Force is equal to what dm by dt multiplied by v plus m times dv by dt. This is rate of change of momentum. So now if v is constant, let's keep v constant. Okay, so for example, you have a rocket. So now there is a combustion chamber inside the rocket and what happens inside that combustion chamber? So the fuel will be burned, okay, and now the, there are which gets converted to exhaust gases, okay. So those gases, they are ejected from this section, okay, uh, in backwards direction we can say or downwards direction. So this is the force exerted by rocket on these gases in downwards direction. So there will be a reaction force, we can say because of these gases on the rocket, which will be in upwards direction. Okay. So how much will be this force exerted by rocket on the gases or force exerted by gases on the rocket? It will be equal and opposite. Okay. So in this case now, if we consider this rocket, its mass is suppose m. Okay, and it is not constant. So let's consider, let's suppose it is moving with constant velocity, v. Okay, so you can keep v constant, but its mass is changing. So the second term, sorry, uh, this dv by dt will be equal to zero, right? Because we are considering v to be constant. So dv by dt will be equal to zero. And therefore, now what will happen? The force exerted by gases on the on the rocket will be equal to dm by dt multiplied by v. Okay, so what is the dm by dt? It is rate of change of mass of the rocket. And how much is that? It is equal to, we can say, the mass of the gases that are coming out of the rocket with respect to time. Okay, so if in one kg, sorry, if one second, one kg gas comes out, then it will be equal to what? 1 kg per second. Is it clear? Okay. So the formula here will be dm by dt multiplied by v. Right? So now, let us solve some questions based upon whatever we discussed. So let's see this first question. A particle moving with velocity v 
is acted by three forces shown by the vector triangle PQR. Okay, so this is first force, this is second force, and this is third force. The velocity of the particle will. Can you guess? These are three forces. One is acting like this, other one is acting like this, and this one is acting like this. Action D. Why? Okay. So, can you say some of these three forces will be equal to zero? If this is F1 bar, this is F2 bar, what will be some of these two? This plus this, it will be equal to a vector which is directed from here to here. Right? Now, if you add this third force, which is in opposite direction to the resultant of these two, and which has magnitude same as that of resultant of these two, the net force will be equal to how much? So, net force is equal to zero. Okay. Because you are starting from a point and you are drawing all the vectors. Okay. And you are coming back at the same point. So, net force will be zero. So, since net force is zero, body is in equilibrium. So, its velocity will not change. Okay. So, velocity remains constant. Right. This is simple. Let's see next one. Three forces acting on a body are shown in the figure. To have the resultant force only along y direction, we want resultant force along y direction. The magnitude of minimum additional force needed is. So can you guess in what direction should that resultant extra force? Okay, that you have to add. It should be the direction of the extra force that you should add if required so that all the forces minus x plus y. Okay. You don't want the force to be equal to zero. You want it to be in y direction. This is the question. Okay. If the force is in y direction, that means you should add, if you want force in y direction, that means you should add extra force. In x direction only, we should cancel all components in x direction of all the forces. The x component of all the forces. If you cancel x component of all the forces, then you will you will be left with only y components of forces, and therefore net force will be in y direction. Right? So let's find it out. So let's find out the resultant of these forces. Okay. So you have this force 4 Newton, which is at an angle of how much? This is 60 degrees. So the x component of this force will be how much? 4 Newton multiplied by cos of 60. Okay. It is 4 cos 60. Okay, this one, right? For this one, this one is also this angle is 30, this is 30, so this will be 60 degrees. So, this is also 2 cos of 60. And for this force, it will be this is also at 60 degree, it is 1 cos of 60. Okay, so 4 cos 60 is acting towards left. And these are acting towards right. 
and you are exerting an extra force suppose okay towards left you can consider towards left towards right that doesn't matter okay so now if you you will get some answer so if answer has positive sign that means whatever direction you considered is correct if it has negative sign that means the direction you considered is wrong you should consider it to be in opposite direction okay right so i can say i exert this extra force and then x component so sum of all x component becomes zero so fx plus 4 cos 60 will be equal to how much total force towards left should be equal to total force towards right 1 cos 60 plus 2 cos 60 right how much is this so cos 60 is 1 by 2 so this is 3 cos 60 okay and this this one is 4 cos 60 this, this is 4 multiplied by cos of 60 right so this is 4 times half 4 times half and this is 3 times half so i will just say 3 by 2 this is 4 by 2 so take this 4 by 2 on this side so fx will be equal to what it is equal to 3 minus 4 yeah so i have just taken half common so it is 3 minus 4 right that's minus half okay minus half newtons so it's coming out to be negative that means you should consider force in this direction okay so now you want only magnitude not the direction so answer is option c right this is simple let's consider next one a stone is dropped from a height h it hits the ground with a certain momentum p if same stone is dropped from a height 100 percent more than the previous height the momentum when it hits the ground will change by tell me stone is dropped from some height it will have some momentum same stone is dropped from height 100 percent more than the previous height the momentum when it hits the ground will change by this is the question yes can you find out momentum of a body which is dropped from some height is equal to mv can you find out velocity of a body which is dropped from some height okay but you don't know time body which is dropped from height h yeah so v will be equal to square root of 2 times of gh right we have this formula okay so how much will be momentum so i can say v1 will be square root of 2 times of gh1 momentum p1 will be equal to m times v1 which will be equal to m times this thing okay for the second case momentum will be p2 which is m times of v2 because it is dropped from some other height 2gh2 and what will be ratio of these two so p1 by p2 is equal to m multiplied by square root of 2g h1 divided by m multiplied by square root of 2g h2 so mm will get cancelled out okay this gg will get cancelled out you will have square root of h1 upon h2 only okay so how much is h2 it is 100 percent more 
than that of H1. Okay, H2 is hundred percent more. So what can I say? P1 by P2. Or let's take P2 by P1 will be equal to square root of. This is two times H1, right? H2 is two times H1 divided by H1. This will get cancelled. You get square root of two. Okay. So P2 equals to P2 by P1 is equal to how much? 1.41 yeah 1.414 yeah so now if you multiply this by 100 because you want to find percentage change in momentum okay so if you multiply this thing by 100 what will you get p2 by p1 multiplied by 100 will be equal to 141 okay so if it was 100 it becomes 141 that means by how many percentage has it changed 41 percent okay this is the answer option b right okay let's see next question a body under the action of a force f bar equals to 6 i cap minus 8 j cap plus 10 k cap acquires an acceleration of 1 meters per second square the mass of this body must be. Tell me. So this is simple. F equals to m times a. Okay, and acceleration is given. It's equal to one. Magnitude is given. Okay. So acceleration is force upon mass. Magnitude of acceleration is given that will be equal to magnitude of force. Option C. Let's check. It will be equal to magnitude of force divided by mass. Okay. You want mass. So take this on other side. So it will be equal to magnitude of force divided by magnitude of acceleration. So which is square root of 6i minus 8j plus 10k. So 6 square plus minus 8 square plus 10 square and divided by you have 1 okay 6 square is 36 this is 64 36 plus 64 is 100 100 plus 100 200 and square root will be how much so 2 times 100 so keep 2 as it is okay 10 root 2 right right it is option c Okay. okay. Let's see the next question. Force of six Newton acts on a body at rest and of mass one kg. During this time, the body attains a velocity of thirty meters per second. The time for which the force acts on the body is this is also very simple like f equals to ma okay so f is equal to m times v minus u divided by t you can say right force is given it's six mass is one kg and it attains a velocity of 30 meters per second that means initial was zero so final is 30 initial is zero time is how much Okay, that's what we have to find out, right? So, how much will be the time? Take t on this side, six on this side. It will be thirty divided by six, right? So it will be five seconds. Option B. Okay, so this is very simple. Last question was also very simple. Yeah, but still, these kind of questions can also be asked. Let's see this one: a six hundred kg rocket. Is set for a vertical firing. If the exhaust speed is 1000 meters per second, the mass of the gas ejected per second to supply the thrust needed to overcome the weight of the rocket is. Tell me which formula we will use. Let's check 
f will be equal to dm by dt v times dm by dt okay so we are given with 600 kg rocket okay it is set for vertical firing so force will be equal to mg right so let's take 6000 okay f is equal to mg right so this is equal to this is equal to dm by dt multiplied by v is 1000 so take that 1000 on other side yeah so dm by dt is equal to 6 kg per second good very good so it is 6 kg per second option c next question in a rocket fuel burns at the rate of 1 kg per second this fuel is ejected from the rocket with velocity of 60 km per second this exerts a force on the rocket equal to tell me this is simple right force will be just equal to dm by dt multiplied by v so fuel burns at the rate of 1 kg per second okay so this much is the fuel which is ejected out okay per second and its velocity is given 60 km per second so it is just 1 times 60 okay right so if rocket moves with constant velocity how much would be its mass oh i'm sorry 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 i did a mistake this is 60 kilometers per second okay so i should convert this to meters per second this 60 multiplied by 10 raised to 3 right right so it will be 60000 okay 60000 newtons all right so my question is if the rocket is moving with constant velocity how much would be its mass this is simple if this rocket is moving with constant velocity that means you have one force due to gravity which is mg okay if it is moving with constant velocity and there is another force which is exerted by these gases exhaust gases which is upwards right so that is f so if f is equal to mg then what will happen there will be no acceleration okay it will move with constant velocity so f is equal to mg we can say okay that is mg is equal to 60 60000 so that's why uh, how much would be the mass 6000 kg right let's see next question sand is being dropped on a conveyor belt at the rate of m kg per second the force necessary keep the belt moving with a constant velocity of v meters per second will be tell me you have a conveyor belt a belt like this conveyor belt so which moves which keeps on moving due to a motor okay so there will be a motor let's suppose this one is motor not m motor okay so it keeps on moving like this now suppose you stop the motor and there is no friction what will happen it will keep on moving right you stop the motor 
there is no friction then it will keep on moving now what you do you drop some sand here okay you keep on dropping some sand on that belt what will happen its mass will increase right initially it had some mass now its mass will increase but the momentum should remain constant okay that means what will happen the velocity will decrease and you don't want that velocity to decrease that's why keep the velocity constant you are exerting you keep on exerting the force okay so how much that force should be equal to so you are not changing velocity that means that force should be equal to what the change in mass with respect to time dm by dt multiplied by the velocity which you want to keep constant v is it clear okay so this is now simple okay so dm by dt is m and velocity is v only so it is just equal to m times v option c okay next question these are all similar kind of question right a satellite in force free space sweep stationary interplanetary dust at the rate of dm by dt equals to alpha times v where m is mass and v is the speed of the satellite and alpha is the constant okay the acceleration of satellite is okay so what will be acceleration of the satellite again you find out force now if satellite is moving like this and there is a dust coming from the other side okay there is a dust which is coming from other side so will the satellite get accelerated or decelerated option d let's check so uh force will be equal to what minus of this dm by dt we can say multiplied by v so that is minus of alpha times v multiplied by v right yeah so this is the force and you want acceleration so it is mass times acceleration is the force take uh, mass on the other side so you get acceleration equals to minus alpha v square upon m right it is option d good okay now even if we didn't consider this that whether it will get accelerated or decelerated the magnitude is same and all options are with negative sign <laughs> right there was no chance that we could get wrong in this question if there was an option like alpha v square upon m and minus alpha v square upon m then there was a problem okay we had to choose this one only right 